Next, we'll create our normal gain piece. This piece can come in six different colors, and when three or more of the same color are in a row, they'll disappear. We'll worry about matching and clearing pieces later. For now, we'll define only the most basic functions of the game piece. In the Scripts folder, right-click, and from the menu, select Create C Sharp Script, and name it Game Piece. Click on the Prefabs folder and select the Normal Piece Prefab. Go back to the Scripts folder and drag the Game Piece component over to the inspector to add it to our prefab. Now go ahead and open the Game Piece script. To start with, we know that each game piece will have an X and Y coordinate on the grid, so we'll add those first. I've created two private ints, X and Y, and then public properties for them. Notice that we only provide a getter for the position. This is because not all pieces will be able to move, so not all pieces should allow their position to be changed. In just a moment, we'll create a movable piece. We also know that each piece will have a type. Right now we only have the normal piece type but later we'll have other types. Like I did with the position, I created a private type variable and then a public property to access that variable. I didn't add a setter because we don't want other classes changing our piece type. The game piece should also have a reference to our grid class in case it needs information about the grid or about other pieces on the board. Like I did before, I created a private variable and a public accessor. I called it grid ref because grid with a capital G was already taken by our class. Finally, we'll create an initialization function called init. We'll call this function after we instantiate the game piece's game object so that we can initialize some of these variables. The init function takes in the X and Y positions, the grid, and the piece type, which are all the parameters we defined earlier. I use an underscore just to differentiate between the parameters passed into the function and the parameters for our piece. Since we're inside the game piece class, we can set these parameters directly, since we don't have a setter. Open up the grid class, and let's modify how we create the pieces to use this new game piece class. Instead of storing the game object for each piece, we'll store the game piece component. All I'm doing now is switching our array from game objects to game pieces. I'll store the game object in a temporary variable called new piece. Since we're not storing the game object in the pieces array anymore, I'll replace all the references to it with new piece. And now we store the game piece component of the new piece game object in our pieces array. And finally, we call the init function that we just wrote. I'm passing in the X and Y coordinate, this, which is a reference to this grid class, and the piece type, which will just be normal for now. It accidentally auto-completed these brackets, so I'm just going to erase those. If you hit play, you can see that not much has changed, but on the back end, we're now using a custom game piece class instead of storing the game object. Next, we're going to make our pieces move. 